Hi, and welcome back to our YouTube series on SAP Business Technology Platform. Today, we will focus on the SAP BTP cockpit, looking at using the services, how to navigate sub-accounts, sub uh, entitlements, and much more. I'm joined here with Riley Rainey from the SAP Developer Relations team. Hey, Hi, Allison. Hi, Riley. Uh, I guess first off, what is the BTP cockpit? Uh, can you tell us a bit about it and uh, when sh when should we be using it? Sure. So BTP Cockpit is the starting point for really all the actions that you'll perform when you're interacting with SAP Business Technology Platform. Um, it provides the uh, uh, administrative tools to organize your accounts, to organize security, to start up the different services and, and keep tabs on the runtime status of all of those. Uh, really, everything that you're going to do uh, to configure your environment is going to be done using BTP. Some of your development is going to happen in other places, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, it's really the central starting point for everything. Right. So BTP cockpit is really where it all starts. Absolutely. Um, so what should we look at first? So let me share my screen, and I'll bring up a few things, and we'll we'll look at a. Uh, uh, a number of different subfacets of this. We're not going to cover absolutely everything here, but it'll give you a pretty good taste of uh, what's going on. When you sign up for an SAP BTP account through, say, the free tier trial, or uh, you get an, a commercial account, one of the first things that you'll get is a welcome email, which will direct you through a URL to your SAP BTP cockpit. And this introduces a, an important basic concept here. That cockpit that you'll be directed to through that email is to a top level entity that we call a global account. And that's what we're actually looking at here. Now I've prop populated a few things within this and I'll uh, talk through a little bit of that. Um, but we're not, again, we're not gonna get into a tremendous amount of detail here, but each global account will have one or more sub accounts. Now, the global account you can think of as just sort of the collecting place for where the action happens. The action is going to actually happen in those sub accounts. For, so these become places to isolate your work, uh, isolate a particular set of applications, have a unique set of permissions. Um, and, and again, it's where uh, the stuff will, will really actually occur. The global account sort of organizes it all into a place that associates those things with you. Great, so we can see the uh, cockpit, we can see the global account, and uh, and you did mention sub-accounts. Can you show us how to create a sub-account? Absolutely. It's really simple, right up here in this button uh, is create, and I select sub-account, and I'm presented with a little dialogue here. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's say that I wanted to create an account here in the US. Um, and that's an important part of sub accounts, right? The uh, the idea here is that because this is running in the cloud and this is a particular environment, a sub account has a particular affinity with a particular what we call SAP BTP region. The probably a, a really simple way to think about that is that is a particular data center, and that's typically associated with a uh, hyperscaler vendor like AWS or Azure. I have a drop down here that allows me to select which one of those, but there's also some other help that you can go to that's pretty handy as well. If you go back to Discovery Center that we were looking at in the earlier video, if you go over to the services display and click on this learn more button, um, in addition to some of the instructional videos, it's got a great map uh, sitting right here. And this gives you a geographical overview of where these different data centers are. They're color coded by AWS, Azure, and um, and so on. So all the different hyperscalers are uh, there. And one of the reasons, again, for picking a particular region might be that you might have a particular group of users on a particular continent in a particular regional area. And by selecting a data center, a region uh, that's closer to those folks, your response time is minimized. So let me go back to that and Here's the region dropdown. I said I wanted to create this in the US, so I'll select that, uh, USA, VA, everything else I can default here. I click on the Create button, and it's simple as that. This will be created, and of course, there's a number of steps going on in the background while this is happening while we're talking here. 
Um, but at the end of that process, I have a brand new, almost completely empty sub account. We'll talk about why I said almost here in just a second, uh, ready for my use and ready for configuration. Uh, great. So now that we've gone over global accounts, sub accounts, and now that we've seen this empty sub account, what happens next? So a few of the entities and terms that you're going to want to understand inside a sub account go like this. Within a sub account, there actually are certain things that are uh, you could consider to be intrinsic to the sub account. And you see this list of things called entitlements. These are different entities. And, and again, this pre-populated list, you can think of these as just sort of intrinsic things. These are things that you typically uh, don't think about as front and center entities inside BTP, log management, um, auto scaling and application. You don't have to use each one of these, but they're common enough and really no cost associated with them that these are all available inside anytime I've created a sub account, you get those. Now, as I start to uh, want to do meaningful work within here, one of the first things that I'm going to think about is, well, what, what things do I need to add to this particular um, sub-account to do something interesting? So let's say back to, again, the video that we uh, did previously where we were talking about Discovery Center. Let's say I went into that uh, Discovery Center mission about, let's say, Business Application Studio or something like that, which is a web-based development tool. Let's say I wanted to add that based on the directions inside a mission that I was exploring to this mix. The way that I would do that is I actually go back up to my global account because from a permissions point of view, all the permissions to do things flow from the global account down to some other lower level entity. Right, the sub accounts is the first starting point for that. So if I look in here at the global account, there's also an entitlements tab within here, but you see two sub buttons. The service assignments shows me what's already there, but it's giving me, because I'm at the global account, a global view of all of this, what I'm using across all my different sub accounts. If I want to assign something to that particular sub account, I need to assign it to it as an entity. So I click on entity assignments, and then I would select the name of that new sub account that I created, USA. Click select. And now it's going to give me a view of those same things that I was just looking at. But what's different about the picture here is there's also this button, configure entitlements. So as an administrator, I can now say, okay, for this particular sub account, I'm going to entitle the people who are using that particular sub account to run something, do something, whatever that is. And it, it, we're, we're talking about services and service plans here. So again, sort of the hypothetical task that I was going to take on here was to add Business Application Studio. I click on the Add Service Plans button. And within this is a list of all the different services. This is going to map almost exactly, in fact, it does, to the services catalog that we saw back in Discovery Center, right? And if I go down here, because I know where it is, I go to SAP Business Application Studio and click on that, you'll notice that it shows available plans. This is another uh, sort of a sub-entity to a service. Anytime a service is available and made available by SAP, there's going to be different service plans associated with that. Um, in, in some cases, it's just the difference between using something for free and actually paying for it, right? In this particular case, because I'm doing a Discovery Center mission, uh, this is a really low investment thing. I want to do it for free. I'll click on free here. I could click on the standard edition and use something like this in the same way, but in production with less restrictions. If you're interested in understanding which restrictions are there, you can go back to the Discovery Center service listings and you can see the difference of uh, what capabilities might be different in each one of these. There's also some services that have specific tiers of service. There's different sizes of HANA databases, things like that, that I can select here too. And of course, there's different costs associated with selecting larger and larger services here. So here, if I select add one service, what I've actually done is, uh, after I click the save button there, this is now, uh, I go down here and I see SAP Business Application Studio. 
One other thing to keep in mind, and another step that's implied by this process is the sub account now has been assigned one unit of Business Application Studio. So I can now run Business Application Studio for however many users that free plan supports. It's more than one user, by the way. Um, but I haven't actually started using it yet. To start using it, I would actually go back to the sub account. Visit that sub account here. Look at the entitlements that I was just looking at, but here from this, the sub account point of view. And within Business Application Studio, I can now start that service. And once it's uh, once it's enabled, I can actually start using it. So all those steps are involved. The mission will actually take you through each of those individual steps that I was just talking about. You're not left to your own devices on any of this, but understanding that flow of how entitlements are doled out from the global account into sub accounts and then enabled for each one is an important aspect to remember in the, in the flow and the fact that you're running in a production account. Great, so now that we've enabled the service, how do I get a global overview of what my service usage is? That's a that's a good question. So uh, there's a uh, at the global account level, there's a usage analytics tab. Within this, I get that high level view that you're talking about. I have three sub accounts. I'm in two different geographical regions, and you'll notice here one of the services that's listed is Business Application Studio. It'll show me uh, a summary of all the different usage if there's particular plan limits on this. And of course, uh, I haven't really been doing a lot within this particular uh, uh, global account, but uh, uh, I can see my consumption. If there's particular limits to that, I can see how close to the limits I am. Uh, it gives you a great overview in a number of different ways of a lot of different data uh, that's gonna give you that system administrator or system auditor's point of view of what's going on inside my global account and all the different sub accounts. Great. Um, what would be the next important element we should look at within the BTP cockpit? So uh, that's a good question. We talked about sub accounts being environments. Uh, a key aspect of the environments, as I sort of touched on earlier, was uh, this is how we dole out access permissions for individual users. So it might be interesting to explore a little bit of that. I'll start by going to the global account and you see the security on the left-hand side here. Uh, one of the first basic elements of this is that if I want to add users to be able to do something at a global account level, uh, I can add them right here. I click on create, I do it by email address. So I'm just gonna put in a bogus email address. Same email address here for the ID. I'll talk more about it in just a second, but you see this drop down for identity providers. All I need to maybe tell you about that right now is that an important aspect of BTP is we want to interoperate with your corporate identity service, whatever that is, if you're running as a business. And very often people will have cloud-based identity providers uh, maybe something on-premise, something in the cloud like Azure AD Cloud. Um, we provide the SAP ID service, an SAP Universal ID, and part of that is when you get your initial account, that default identity provider that comes with it is actually the SAP ID service. So if I stay with that and I don't add an identity provider early on in anything that I'm exploring, and really, there, unless you're really focused on identity services, there's really no need to change any of this. But you will need to uh, have that user that you want to add here register, say, with SAP Community or something like that so that they're um, known to the SAP ID service. And then once they've done that, I create them here and they will be able to do certain tasks. Now, I haven't given them any access rights here, and that's sort of what takes us to the next level uh, with all of this. Within this, the actions that I can perform is to actually add access rights to a particular user. And that introduces a, a new concept here. There's this thing called a role collection. And if I look at my own account first, you see one of the things that's assigned to me 
just out of the box, uh, I don't have to do anything on my side, is that I'm assigned as the owner of this particular global account, a role collection that's titled Global Account Administrator. So that gives me access to do things like what I'm doing right now of adding users, uh, configure any of these things that we've discussed up to this point. If I wanted to do this, the same to that user that I just added, and I'm not gonna go through the full thing here, um, I could uh, edit that user and add that. Now I'm not gonna do this in, this in this particular case, but what I will show you is those role collections are actually associated with global accounts and sub accounts. So here we have the list of the, the global account level role collections to do particular tasks. And basically what these amount to is uh, uh, I'm doing some exploration of SAP process automation. So this IRP developer is one that I added, but these two that came intrinsically out of the box were administrator and viewer. You can think of that as read only access versus read write access at this global account level. But similarly, if you go to the sub accounts, what you're going to see is that and let me go to one where there's a little bit of action going on. So you see a little bit richer view here in this particular sub account. I've actually been playing around with SAP process automation. So I've turned on some of those services. Anytime I turn on some of the services, they might come with particular roles that need to be um, exposed through those role collections. Um, or if I'm creating an application myself, I can actually define the roles and role collections that are associated with read access, write access, really any rights that I'm defining uh, for the app. I'm in the driver's seat at that point. But if I look at the role collections for this particular sub account, you'll notice that this list is much richer, right? There's all these different tasks, uh, cloud connector administrator, citizen developer, that's something associated with um, the configuration of SAP process automation. There's some others that are associated with tasks that are, uh, again are sort of out of the box tasks, but only associated with uh, uh, sub accounts as opposed to global accounts. The point here is that as an administrator and someone with administrative rights, I can go in and dole these out to the appropriate individuals. And that user display here, you'll notice that by default, I've been added because I was the administrator of this account. I have rights in this sub account. I'm the person who created it, but no one else does. And this is where I would create a user. I'd add that user. They, they may or may not be uh, listed at the global account level because maybe I don't want to give them access there, but I can add that same user down here, give them the appropriate rights. And if this profile and layout is different than other sub accounts, you kind of get the idea of how different users could have different levels of access in different sub accounts and how you get that security uh, hierarchy and isolation of access. Great, that's uh, a really great explanation of uh, how to add users and the role collections. Uh, is there anything else uh, within the SAP BTP cockpit that you wanted to uh, share with us before we wrap up? Um, not really. I, I think that we've covered a lot of the really high level concepts. Uh, one thing that I would say is if you're looking for more information about the specific setup steps that you'd want to go through to be set up to run missions in general, definitely go back, as we mentioned in that earlier video, to Discovery Center and go to the BTP setup mission. That's the, the very uh, you know topmost, uh, leftmost mission that you're going to see in that list. Uh, nearly everybody goes through that. What this will do is take you a guided view through a number of the steps that I went through sort of ad hoc here, um, but it'll get you set up to run almost any mission very, very easily, saves you a lot of time, and also give you some reinforcement of what we just looked at here. Great. Thanks, Riley. Uh, there are a lot of features to explore within the cockpit, uh, but I think, Riley, you've gone through uh, a good understanding of the essential elements for our initial exploration. Um, like Riley mentioned, be sure to check out the uh, YouTube playlist uh, for the Discovery Center video and find missions that will enable you to gain hands-on experience within the cockpit. Uh, to learn more about SAP BTP, you can go to sap.com backslash BTP uh, and sign up today to start using it for free. 
If you have any questions about the SAP uh, cockpit or BTP in general, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. And uh, with that, thanks. Uh, thanks again, Riley, and uh, have a great day, everyone. You bet.